Hey guys, Ryan here at Sick and Sure Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're going to take a look at my top tips for editing better landscapes. So if you're into landscape and travel photography, we're going to look at how you can improve those edits right now inside of Lightroom. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it together. So first things first, head over to signatureedits.com slash free raw photos if you wanna download these files and edit along with me. I'm just gonna grab them right here right now and import them into Lightroom. All right, so now that we have them inside of Lightroom, let's go over here, get started together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply one of the Signature Edits presets and I'm done. Just kidding. So we're gonna reset so that we're actually using a completely flat look here and we're going to grab our contrast, bring that up. Take our exposure, bring that down. Okay, so you can see we're already looking a lot better than we were before. Let's just analyze what's going on in this image, what we like, what's distracting us, what's kind of taking away from the image, and what we can do about it. So first off, if we actually completely reset this image for a second, you can see that it was taken uh, with decent light, I'll say. At least it's not pure high noon. It looks like the sun is kind of coming directionally somewhere up here in this distance. However, it's still very harsh lighting, and the way I can tell that is, well, twofold. The first is we've got really dark shadows, and we've got really bright highlights, and the second is if we actually look at these little branches here in the corner of the frame, you can see how harsh the light is reflecting off of these leaves. So the first thing that I would do to improve this photo and to edit a better photo like this, same spot, would be to come back and take the same exact photo because it's a beautiful composition. Take it just at a slightly better time. Wait a couple hours later in the day, you're gonna get way better results. Okay, that out of the way, what do we do if we've got a really great photo but the contrast is just being blown out? Okay, another thing if you're taking a photo that I love to do and is very handy is always make sure you minimize the lens flares. In general, uh, lens flares will take away from your image, it won't add to it unless it's a very subtle, very stylistic thing. In this case, if it's covering the entire image, not gonna help. So how do you minimize that? Literally take your hand, put it on top of your lens hood, kind of like you're just extending the length of the lens hood, and 90% of the time you're gonna get rid of this kind of thing. And that will give you so much more contrast in the image, and the camera will just behave better, give you a better result, you'll love editing a lot more. Now what do we do if we're in this Ryan, we can't do anything, we're stuck with this, it's what we got, okay. Let's talk about what we can do. First, we're gonna lower our exposure to where it probably should have been to begin with. Had it been taken here, we would have had a little bit more dynamic range to work with. As it is, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, next we're gonna add a little bit of contrast here. You can see that that's really exaggerating. The noise in our image, which unfortunately is the next part of what could be improved here. The raw file itself, it's got a lot of noise, not much contrast. It's gonna be really tricky to actually deal with this. So how do you fix this noise? Well, in your camera, um, you'd normally start with your settings, make sure your ISO is low and you know everything is maximized, you've got a nice raw file. Uh, my guess is that this was taken with a photo, taken with a slightly older camera or a smaller sensor. It was taken with some kind of Canon. If we go to our info here. Okay, uh, what camera was it taken with? It was taken with a Kozak Easy Share C653 Zoom Digital Camera, which, okay, apparently is, has CR2 files, but the point being that this particular camera, some cameras put out a better RAW file than others. This one, maybe it's a little older, maybe it's a smaller sensor. I don't exactly know, but that's why you've got that noise going on even when the image is very clean in terms of settings. Okay, so we've talked about settings forever. I just wanna drill it into your head that if you can get the raw ingredients looking good, it's gonna be so much easier for editing. So to start with, we're gonna set our exposure where it kinda should have been to begin with. Next, we're gonna grab our contrast, bring that up just a little bit, and little by little, we're going to try and add contrast to this image, because that's mainly what's going on here. And then we're gonna correct some of the things like the color banding and the noise. So we're gonna just add a little bit to the whites, take the blacks down ever so slightly. And just like in the last video I did with my top portrait tri tips, uh, the best tip I can give you with editing in general is you wanna make small little improvements to your image and you do that 100 times over and they stack on each other. It's like compound interest, it's the same exact thing where little by little all these changes make a massive change. Whereas if you try and make one massive change with one slider, it's going to look awful. But if we do just a little improvement, a little bit of sweetness here and there, one step at a time, and that doesn't mean adding everything, but strategically improving your image, addressing one little problem at a time, you're going to get a lot better results. It's gonna be a lot more transparent. Everything's gonna feel better. 
So I'm adding a little bit of vibrance. Okay, here's before and here's after. So we've added some contrast. We've kind of crushed the areas down here. It's a little too dark. So what my aim is overall is to take this image and edit it to the point where it looks like or feels like the light would have been if it had been fantastic. I'm just trying to correct for the fact that we've got some harsh lighting going on by smoothing out our different areas. So down here, we're going to call that our main shadow black zone because it's way too dark. Here is kind of a good exposure level. It's right in the middle, except for this part right here. And then up here, we're starting to blow out and the sky is completely blown out. So we're going to adjust each of these one at a time. I'm going to grab a brush, press O so I can see where that brush is going. And I'm going to do a really quick, really rough brush on this area. Now, the reason I'm not worrying about getting the uh, mask exactly correct is because I'm not going to make a huge change. I'm just going to grab the exposure and slightly increase it, just like that. Now, another thing you can try is lowering the contrast. That will brighten the image as well. But in this case, we're already lacking so much contrast, I don't think that's a good idea. Another thing you can do to brighten things is raise the highlights and the whites rather than just the exposure. That's going to add some contrast and it's going to feel a little bit more natural than had you just done it with exposure because exposure is going to raise the shadows as well. It's going to feel really weird. So if you need to do it a lot, start by using the whites and then a little bit of highlights and see how that treats you. We're going to add a little bit of dehaze because I don't want to take away any contrast from this image. I just want to add and even things out. And here's before and here's after. So very slightly, we've brightened things up in that area. And I can maybe add a little bit of texture because things are looking very soft and mushy. Now, I can only really help that to a point because what was actually captured in the raw file wasn't very sharp. Whether that's an older lens or a slightly smaller sensor size camera or just an older camera, if your photo looks like this raw, you're not going to be able to magically make it look crystal clear and sharp. So this might have been taken handheld, which is why it's a little bit mushy, or it might just be the lens. I've had certain lenses in my life that produce very different results than others. So if you pay for a high quality lens, you're going to get a far sharper image in the end. Uh, just little tips like that. Again, if you're wondering, okay, why isn't this working in the editing process? Start with the source. Start with the actual source image and go from there. Enough of that. I know you're getting sick of it. We're going to talk about other things, which is fixing the next part of this image, which is this area right here. Again, reset. I'm just going to grab the highlights, pull them back. Okay, we've already blown this out clearly, so I'm going to just try and even it out a little bit. I'm going to do that by switching to a range mask. Set that to luminance. Take my range and set it up to, say, 80 to 100. So now if I press O, you can see that that range mask is going to adjust what area of brightness is being masked out. So I just want to grab the very brightest part, so let's say 90 to 100. So I'm only affecting that part of the image. Then I can lower my exposure, and I'm adding a little bit of blue just to even out the tone with the rest of this lake. Okay, so here's before, here's after. I'm not able to pull it that much farther than that because if I do, it's going to start feeling really weird. So I'll take it to kind of where I can, back off a little bit, call it a day. Now to do the same thing with the rest of this water, I want to even it out. So I'm going to grab the rest of this water and this time, instead of taking our exposure down, we're going to attempt to brighten it and blend it in, add some contrast. Because I actually like the contrast of these really bright points on the lake. Helps it pop against those mountains. It's an interesting photo in that it was taken at a really high contrast time of day. So the lighting is pretty harsh and contrasty, but the actual photo is not because the lens let in a lot of flare and we lost all the contrast that would have naturally been here. So we're just going through, selectively adding it back. And contrast really is the key to a good photo. Whether that's contrast in the framing, contrast in the colors, contrast in the actual light, whatever it is, that's what creates a beautiful image. That's what creates images. If you didn't have contrast, you just have a gray image. So that is what we're trying to do as we're editing these landscapes. So we're going to try adding some contrast, maybe add a little dehaze, just play around and see what works. There's no perfect answers. I mean, sometimes there are, but I never seem to find them. And obviously you don't want to take it too far because if you do, it'll look, well, horrible. I'm also going to warm it up very slightly because again, I'm just trying to blend it in with the way that this part of the lake feels. And that may or may not be super achievable. So we're just messing around, seeing what feels the best. And had I done a slightly more accurate mask, maybe I could get better results. So I could go in here, 
hold alt on your keyboard and that'll toggle between your eraser and your normal brush saves you going over and pressing erase every time and I could go through here and just clean up my mask a little bit this area overall I feel like doesn't work so we're gonna just grab our eraser again I'm gonna take my flow and turn that down so that I'm not erasing everything I'm gonna go over it slightly just so it's a little bit less masked a little bit less potent than the rest of the area and we can do the same with the edges of this image instead of trying to erase it completely we'll just try and tone down the effect it's having on this bleed area okay press O again so I can see my results here's before and here's after so we've kind of added a little bit of contrast might have gone slightly too far so I'm going to grab the exposure bring that down a little bit here's so far before and after so we're adding contrast little by little next thing we're going to address is these mountains go up here and these ones up top is where I'm going to start because they're the brightest. I don't need to worry too much about perfectly masking the top area simply because it's already blown out. So what we could do to add more contrast to our image is, you know, leave these mountains bright. That's an option. And then we could just add some contrast, maybe lower the blacks. I don't know. Or we can try and bring them back and level them out with the rest of the image, which is what I'm thinking we should do. Go in here, blend things in. So I'm just alternating between Alt to grab that eraser and erase the parts that I've just gone too far and my normal brush. Now, this isn't working very well. It's a really hard edge. So I could zoom in, make my brush a lot smaller. And you can do this. You don't have to do it down here. You can actually do it with your trackpad. So just two fingers up, two fingers down. will adjust the brush size on a mouse. It's just using the mouse wheel. But the other thing you can do instead is try auto mask. So we're going to click, drag, and with any luck, eh, did a slightly better job. Let's zoom in. And that's the thing, the more extreme of an adjustment you're doing, the more careful you have to be with your mask. That's why whenever possible, I advise, <laughs> at least myself, I try to make my effects as transparent as possible. Because and the less transparent they are, the more time it's going to take you to edit. And sometimes it's just not worth the time. Like all of the time I'm spending here trying to blend this in, is it really making that big of a difference? Is it actually working? Is it even improving the image? Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes it's better just to do a really rough one, a little small improvement. And then you don't have to worry so much about having a perfect mask. Like in this, you can really see that it's not perfect. I didn't do a great job. So I'm going to have to dial it back just to make it less obvious. Before, after. Okay, so we've made some progress here. By evening our image out, we could raise the exposure a little bit before, after. Okay, now we're going to have to worry about this color banding and the noise in the image. So let's go down to our detail panel, grab our noise reduction, take that up to around, I don't know, where it starts getting rid of our detail and not really helping with the noise that much more. And then our color, we're going to grab that, see what happens here. And you should notice if you look at this lens flare, as I take my color reduction up, it's going to blend this a lot more and remove some of those kind of weird colors. So now we've added a bit more of a dreamlike state to our image. The only problem is we've also lost a lot of detail. So let's grab our sharpening. I'm going to grab that, pull it up. And one tip when you're working in any panel in Lightroom is hold down the Alt key. If you do that, different sub menus and hidden features appear, like when you're grabbing the amount, it'll take it and turn it into black and white, which makes it just a lot easier to see what's going on. Same with the radius, holding down Alt, I can see exactly what that radius control is doing. It's expanding kind of the amount of sharpening going on on any line. Detail is going to attempt to preserve detail. Apparently that doesn't do much. <laughs> and masking, this is probably the most important and overlooked feature inside of this panel. Always, always, always use your masking because that's going to make sure that you don't sharpen the entire image. There's no point in sharpening this area down here or the areas of this image that really aren't meant to be sharpened. And the reason for that is if we sharpen it, we're just going to add more noise if you're sharpening something that doesn't have a clear line of contrast. So I'm going to grab it, take it up to around there. And now I should just be sharpening the parts of the image that need to be sharpened and leaving the rest alone. So you can see that's the difference before and after. We can maybe take our sharpening up a little bit, go back to our basic panel, add a little bit of texture. 
Of course, at the same time, you can see when you sharpen something that wasn't sharp to begin with, you start getting this really weird kind of banding effect. So you can only take that so far. If possible, get a better image in camera and you're gonna have better results. Before, after, okay. So this is feeling better. I'm not gonna say that this is my favorite image and it's the best edit of all time. You can please edit this for yourself. Show me the results that you come up with inside of Lightroom. I'm not gonna keep worrying about it too much because we've got a lot of other photos to work on, but hopefully this has given you some good tips to use when you've got an image with some slightly harsher lighting. Of course, there are other things that I would do like minimize distractions by removing these branches here. He said as it failed to work. Okay, something like that. Come on. Going in, use your spot removal tool. Get rid of these slight distractions. And I could keep tinkering all day, just trying to enhance certain areas of the image, darken certain areas. Something as simple as just following the contours of the mountains and the valleys, just to exaggerate what's already there. So you can see there's little lines of contrast, little bright spots on these mountains. If I go in here, I'm gonna turn my flow up so you can see what's going on. We're just going to exaggerate what's happening for a second. And if I go in and I actually brush in between all of the dark areas and the light areas, just following the ridges of these mountains, I'm going to add contrast back into the image and I can actually sculpt the way that the light is showing up. Go in here, you could do another, another thing we could definitely do is follow the line of the mountains along the water. And you can see as soon as we do that, the water just pops so much more. So it's all about adding contrast strategically to your image. Again, we could follow the range, the top of this mountain range, and that's just gonna make it stand out a little bit more from this bright valley in behind. Okay, so something like that. Now let's dial it way back, or we could even go to our range mask, go to luminance. We're just going to target, say the darker parts of this image, it's gonna blend it for us. Here's before and here's after. So you see how we've added some texture and some contrast and some pop to the image just by doing that. And I could go through here, follow the rest of the image and do the same kind of thing. And little by little, we're making improvements. We're slowly adding some shape, some texture back into the image. So I'm gonna move on. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have different ideas for what this edit could be, leave them in the comments below. Let me know and share your own version of this photo. Just tag at signature edits, at signature edits co so I can see it. Okay, let's move on. Here's another photo. We're gonna start by just fixing what's wrong. I think when it comes down to editing photos, getting good results, a lot of it is about removing what is not good, what is not adding to the image, and not so much about adding. When you have to add to your image, most of the time that's a sign that the photo, the composition, something about it in camera should have been improved. If we're just taking away the distractions and what we're left with is an amazing photo, well then that's my personal idea of a photo that was taken very well. Okay, so I'm just going through, I'm grabbing things like this lamp, those couple of bugs, there's some dark spots, maybe from some sensor dust or something on this camera. Let's brighten the image up so we can see what's going on. Okay, so as I brighten it, things look good. The exposure is great. We don't have anything overexposed. You can press the J key on your keyboard. Fun fact, and that'll actually allow you to see when things are being clipped, either in the whites or the blacks of your image. This one looks good. We didn't clip anything. The lighting was fantastic. This photo was taken at a much more even time of day. So we're just gonna go through. We're gonna see what we can remove that's distracting. So I think this sign, not really doing it for me. I'm gonna try and get rid of that. And then there's this metal railing running along the bottom. Okay. Next, I'm gonna see if I can get rid of this garbage can and then maybe this car. Obviously the car is gonna be pretty tricky if we're not using Photoshop. Fun fact, if you press shift while you're going up and down with your cursor or with your trackpad, you'll actually change the feather of your brush as well. Okay, so let's grab that trash can. And honestly, if you're trying to get rid of something that cuts across a line, easiest way to do it, replace it with something else along that line. Now this car, that's gonna be the tricky part because, well, it's a car, it's bigger, it's <laughs> more awkward, but I think we might be able to mask it, we'll see. I'm gonna start by just letting Lightroom see what it can do. 
and I'm going to get rid of the things that are really obviously a car. So the shape of the body, that wheel well down in the bottom, here we've got a mirror and a front headlight, something like that. Is it convincing? No, I'd have to come back and kind of mess around with it later. So for the sake of time, we're just going to leave the car in our photo. I'd probably wind up taking that into Photoshop and change it, but it just depends. Is this one of those images, images that is worth that time? Maybe, maybe not. So a few other things, I'm just going to clean up on the grass here, see if there's any trash, anything amiss. Okay. You can see when we zoom in, there is quite a bit of noise. It was taken at ISO 1250, so we're going to want to clean that up as well. So before I start editing, I'm actually just going to do that. Is there a technically better way to do this? Should you be doing it in a certain order? Well, maybe. I kind of do things as I notice them. And again, you can see as I take the sharpening up, that's adding so much noise to the image. But if I grab my masking tool, drag that up, all of that goes away because now we're just actually adding sharpening to the areas that should be sharpened instead of the entire image if the masking were off. So there you go. We clean that up a little bit. We can grab our radius, play with that a little. And obviously, once we zoom out, these changes might be totally irrelevant. We might want to change things up. I'm thinking we want to add a little bit more sharpening, lower our masking a little bit, and lower our noise reduction slightly. Okay, that's good. Now, it's not perfectly sharp yet, but I'm okay with that because I'm going to actually add some selective sharpening to the image, just to the areas that I really want to draw your eye to, rather than trying to do it in this panel right here. So let's head up here and just do some basic adjustments to our image now. Let's add some contrast. You can see because the image has amazing light, it's very flat, very flattering, very beautiful. There's not much we have to do. We just add some contrast and everything just feels right. The colors look right. Everything's good in the hood. However, we're still looking a little bit soft and I'd like to enhance it a little bit more. So we're going to grab our highlights, take those up. Whites, take those up. Should we go to our tone, tone curves? Well, maybe we could. Honestly, my kind of philosophy for editing has been shifting away from doing absolutely everything on every single photo. Sometimes the photo doesn't need it. If it doesn't, why would you add it? It's about saying, what does this actually need? And to me, that's just cleaning up the distractions, really focusing on evening out the light even more. You can see that our sky is still pretty bright compared to our foreground here. So I'm going to actually grab my brighten brush, which is nothing but just a preset with a little bit of exposure applied. And I'm going to just really messily mask that in. Switch over here. And you can see that with the auto mask, it actually did a pretty good job already. I was going to use a luminance mask, but that looks fine. And of course, my trick, definitely raise the highlights and the whites before you try and raise the exposure on an area. If you raise the exposure, it's going to raise the shadows as well and the blacks, and that's just going to look kind of weird. You can only take that so far. It's going to be a lot more subtle if you're just raising the bright parts of that image. Now, the part that's not working for me is the mask that showed up on this cloud, so I'm just going to erase that. Turn my flow all the way up and turn off auto mask for a second here. That moment when you say that you turn the flow up and then you actually forgot. That's better. Okay, press O. So you can see here's before, here's after. Is this good and natural looking? No, it's not, but that's okay once we raise our exposure overall. I think it blends a lot better. Now, I think we could still go a little bit brighter, which means pulling our highlights back a little bit to just even out that sky. And then we're gonna add a little bit of extra sharpness to this area, to this image selectively. So we're gonna grab some sharpness, turn that up, texture, a little bit of clarity. I also have a brush for this. Add texture. You can copy this if you like, save it as your own preset, or they're included with any preset pack that you buy with Signature Edits. And I'm just going to go over the parts of the image that I feel are a little bit soft, and I'd like to add some texture. So the edge of these buildings, and particularly this roller coaster right here. That's really what this photo is all about, is this roller coaster, right? So that's what we want to emphasize. Good, good. And honestly, this arch thing, I could maybe get rid of it, but 
I don't mind it so much. We're just going to leave it. Something like that. Get all these rungs underneath. Okay, here's before. Here's after. Small, maybe a little subtle. I think I could dial back on my contrast a little bit. There you go. Before. After. What have we done? We've gotten rid of the distractions in the photo. We've kind of emphasized the parts that we think are most important in the image. And we're going to take a little emphasis away from this area over here. Because I'm noticing just overall, it's too bright. So things that are distracting, not adding to your image, just tone them down. Simple as pie. Okay. Is this a great image? Yeah, I think that the photographer is awesome. Is this my favorite edit? No, it's not at all. But hopefully this is just giving you some ideas. I'm even going to crop in, play around with that, see if we can improve the focus of the image just by changing the way that we approach it. Sure, let's move on. Okay, so this one, again, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to focus on small little changes. Start by just highlights up, shadows down, whites up, blacks down. Get the exposure where we want it, white balance where we like it. A little bit warmer will be good for me. Tone curve, head over there, and we're going to do an S curve. If this is very confusing for you, don't worry, I totally understand. Head over to my tone curve tutorial, and that'll really dive in deep and explain how this works. Essentially, we've got our whites, our blacks, our highlights, our shadows, and our midtones, and we're just adjusting those different values, but kind of getting your head around what does what, like whether this goes up or down. What we're doing is we're taking our highlights up and our highlights down. And if we go over here, we're taking our midtones up and our midtones down. Shadows up, shadows down. Blacks up, blacks down. Right? But getting your head around that can take some time. So just watch that tutorial. It'll help a little bit. Before, after. Nothing really crazy here, just making some small, slight adjustments. I'm going to press J just to see what's clipping, and we do have some blacks clipping. So I'm going to raise my black level up a little bit just to get rid of that. Now clipping isn't always a bad thing. It's okay to have parts of your image be black if in fact they actually were black. Like if someone's wearing a black t-shirt, you shouldn't try and make that t-shirt gray. Embrace the black, but it can just be helpful to see, oh, I went a little bit too far here. I'm losing some detail, whatever. Okay, so this vehicle here, and as I zoom in, you can really see that this was taken handheld. And it was taken at 1 640th of a second, but still it looks like it was pretty fuzzy. They were shaking a little bit as they took the photo. Use a tripod if you can. It's going to improve the overall sharpness of your image. Okay, what I like about this image, I love the composition. What I don't like so much, the lighting actually looks kind of harsh and not so good. We've also got some really bright in-focus areas here in our foreground, and the background is pretty soft. Now, if it were me, it would have been much better to shoot this at a higher ISO, so say ISO 800 if you have to, and take your f-stop up to say 5, 6, 8, whatever it is. That'll give you an image that actually has sharpness all the way through. And I don't really feel like this part of the image is what needed to be focused on. My eye naturally is drawn to this area right here. So actually changing the focus in camera to this area would have given a better pleasing image and making sure you drop your f-stop would have made more of the image in focus. With landscapes, depth of field is is tricky and doesn't always add to the image. Oftentimes having it in focus is better. Anyways, enough of that. We're going to grab this brush and I'm actually going to take some of the contrast out of this area and highlights down because this snow is just standing out too much to me. Take the whites down too. And what we're trying to do, hopefully, is even out the light between this hill here and this next hill over here. Press O so I can see what's going on. Okay, somewhere around there. And then dial it back a little because you can almost bet you're always going to take it too far. Okay, this truck, kind of distracting to me, so we'll get rid of it. That was easy. Now, let's see what we can do here about our sharpening. We're going to add some overall sharpening to the image. Turn our masking up. Take our radius up something like that. Now there's only so much I'm going to be able to do because this photo was actually not in focus and it was pretty shaky so we have this kind of blurry effect going on in the photo overall. So those are kind of my top tips for this image. I'm not going to dwell on it too too much simply because for me I'd have to go back take a new photo 
And that's why you always want to take as many as you can with as many variations as you can. I have some photographers who are way photography friends, photographers. I don't have them. They have me as a friend. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is they're way better than me. They do this and take professional travel photography photos. And when they do it, they'll go, they'll spend an hour taking a photo of this temple or mosque, or I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm sorry. But <laughs> they'll spend an hour taking it and they'll take it from different angles. They'll adjust the crop. They'll change lenses. They'll change the ISO and the f-stop. And they'll take three, 400 variations just to select one photo. And in the course of that hour or two that they're spending moving around, checking out different things, trying different ideas, they refine the composition, they improve the contrast, they find the perfect angle, and it really just makes all the difference in the world. So again, <laughs> hate to drive this home, my top tip for editing portraits and landscapes and every type of photo is just take a better photo to begin with. Do that by improving your composition, spending more time on the photo. Things like your camera settings are actually very important. So understanding your manual mode and just working with that and timing the photo, making sure it's taken at the right time of the day. Now this might have been shot just because you were on tour, on a tour bus somewhere and you didn't have the chance to actually come back at the right time of day. So it is what it is. This is how you, I'll edit it given the circumstances, but it would have been so much better had this photo been taken, say, around sunset or at dawn. You get better color in the sky, better lighting overall, and you just be happier with your image. Plus, then you avoid the crowds. Everyone wins. So we're going to start here by editing for the sky. So I'm going to try and get my sky looking pristine. I'm going to reset this entirely, take my exposure down, grab our HSL, and easiest way to grab that sky back Take the blues back down. Looks like we can't take it too far before we start seeing some weird effects. So maybe two around there. And the channel on either side of the blue, I'm going to take those down a little bit too. Next, take our saturation up the blues a little bit. Somewhere around there. Good so far. Now because this temple is clearly not blue and the sky definitely is, I might be able to find the colors that correspond to it and take everything else up in the luminance. But of course, because there's not a lot of color on this actual structure, is not going to work very well for me. Here's before, here's after. We've got a ways to go. Let's start by grabbing these shadow areas and mask them out. So I'm going to grab my brush, just really sloppily brush on this whole building. Go down to my range mask, turn the luminance on, and we're just going to target, say, anything below midtones. So 0 to 38% brightness, that's what we want to adjust. Okay, looks like we got it. I'm not going to do that with exposure. I'm going to start by raising our shadows and our blacks. See what I can get away with before it looks weird. Something like that. Now I'm going to grab the exposure, take that up a little bit, and I'm going to have to add some contrast back to the image because we've taken contrast out by raising those shadows up. Now we could also try raising the shadows, the whites and the highlights of the image. So it's kind of weird. You're raising the whites and the highlights of the shadows, which seems impossible, but it works and it gives you a better result, I find, most of the time than trying to raise the shadows too far. In fact, we could even pull back on the shadows a little bit, raise our exposure ever so slightly more, and here's before and here's after. So we've got a lot of that detail back. Now let's pop back into the main panel. I'm going to grab our exposure, take it up somewhere around there. And we're going to do another brush. And this time, instead of targeting the dark parts of the image, we're going to target the sky. Like a so, press O so you can see what you're doing. Range mask, luminance, and this time, just the bright parts of the image. Okay, press O again. A couple tricks for adding color to the sky. First, you can grab your temperature and just take it down. I know, it's wild. Just like that, we've added some nice blue to the sky. How awesome. Of course, you could also Mess around with your hue, see what happens there. I'm not going to because that didn't help at all. And you can add some color too if you want. So we can add a little bit more navy to the sky. Just make sure you don't go overboard on this because it's very easy to do and it helps no one. So I'm not going to worry about adding too much color there. Say that. Before. After. Next. We can grab our exposure, take that down a little bit more. Take our highlights up though, and our whites up. And what that's going to do is we're going to be able to darken the blue part of the sky while keeping the clouds nice and bright and hopefully maintaining a lot of our actual contrast. I'm not liking adding the amount of color we are to this photo. 
to the sky. So we're going to try and find the sweet spot somewhere around there before and after. So we've taken back a lot of the detail in the sky. We've brought out some more detail in this structure. And lastly, well, there's a million other things we could do and we could keep playing forever and ever. We're going to start by getting rid of these distracting wires. See if Lightroom is smart enough. Looks like not today. We're going to try this one piece at a time. Okay, I don't know what this weird ghost is about. There we go. <laughs> that was strange. I'm going to start with the wires. So we'll zoom in here like that. Wire. And sometimes Lightroom's going to nail it, and sometimes it's going to be like, geez, that is the easiest thing in the world. Why are you messing up? Try taking it from the other direction, see if that helps. Okay, there's some really, really weird kind of ghosting going on. No idea. So we're just going to kind of ignore that for now. Is that in the original image? No. What is that? We've got some fringing also happening here. So let's go to our lens corrections. Enable profile corrections. It's not helping with the fringing. It's helping with the rest of the image. I find profile corrections are hit or miss. In this particular case, I don't think it's helping the image. It's just cropping in. So we'll do some manual corrections. We're going to start by going to the defringe. And fringing is when you have this weird kind of color cast along the edge of contrast in your image. So we're going to grab our little dropper, place it there. You can see that it got rid of that purple fringe. Now we'll take it on the green, got rid of that. Here's before, and here's after. Clean that up a little bit, which is good. And then our distortion, we can try adjusting that. Sometimes, actually exaggerating this stylistically can be helpful. So I'm going to actually make the distortion worse, which is going to make the image seem a little bit wider. We're going to constrain the crop so it grabs all that white space, gets rid of it. But you're noticing now, probably, that the steps are totally crooked. So we're going to want to straighten that somewhere around... I don't know, there-ish. Okay. Before, after. Good. Let's straighten out our crop here. Looks like we're still a little crooked. An easy way to do this, if you want, is you can just grab this angle tool, and we'll follow something we know should be straight in the image, like this pillar. If you're not as bad at drawing a straight line as me, or you can grab these steps. We know they're supposed to be straight, so we'll grab them. And Lightroom will do the rest of the work. Hello. Good. Okay. So that... <laughs> well, what just happened here? Let's head back here to our previous import. Temple photo. Okay. Here's before. Here's after. Now we're looking a little bit soft up on here, so next step for me is going to be just adding some sharpness to the parts of the image we want to sharpen and add some texture to. Mainly up here, these pillars. And I'm not worrying about the effect right now, I'm literally just doing a really quick brush. And these steps. Okay, we're going to add some texture. We can do that by raising the contrast a little bit, exposure a little bit, highlights, shadows drop slightly, texture up a little bit. Take it to where you think looks good, then just back it off by 20%. That's the rule, and I'm sticking to it. Dehaze is not helping us here. A little bit of sharpness. Here's before, and here's after. So we've kind of made that building just pop. Of course, the mask is a little messy. I should clean it up. Press O. A little messy. Try a lot messy. OK. Now, of course, the more subtle you are with your mask, the less you have to worry about that. But we're going to do one more brush. And to save some time, we'll just go to our Add Texture preset. And this area of the pillars, to me, still looks a little bit dark and a little bit um, soft. So I'm going to brighten that up. Try and get inside of here as well. 
So I can't wait to see what images you come up with or what edits you come up with. So please tag me at Signature Edits Co. So I can see how much better you are than me. That's the goal here. And of course, you could do this all day long. And literally, I've watched people who are better than edit <laughs> less. Wow. When your mouse stops working. People who are better at editing and less impatient than I am take a lot longer doing this exact strategy. Just a little bit brighter here, a little darker there, a little contrast here, a little contrast gone there, a little saturation here, you know? And if you do that, you're going to get way, way better results. Little by little by little, you improve that image, and then it's just, wow, what a transformation. So here's before, and here's after. So I think we're better. Is this an image that I'm going to enter for a competition because I'm so proud of the edit? Probably not. There's still some fringing going on here I'd have to fix. There's just some sharpening issues, but hopefully you can see some overall tips for if you encounter this kind of thing. That's what you can do. Okay. Now, lastly, because I always take things too far, I'm going to dial back on the contrast a little bit. Call it a day. And you could also mess with your exposure levels, see what feels right. Probably around there. Okay, next photo. This one is beautiful. The lighting is superb. The contrast, oh, everything about this photo is so amazing and lovely. Thank you to the awesome photographer, Anonymous, who uploaded it. So what we're going to do is we're going to enhance what we want to enhance, and we're going to take away the things that are distracting. Now, the beauty of this composition, it was done so well in camera, you can see there's really not much going on that is taking away from the photo. I love pretty much every aspect of it. What's the most important part? Definitely these canoes here. So I'm going to start by just exaggerating that. I'm going to press, press on our radial mask here, press the apostrophe key to invert it, and I'm just going to enhance the texture on these canoes and raise the exposure overall on them with a really generous feather. So here's where it's affecting. Before, after. Dial it back just a bit. That'll allow me to do two things. One, just to make this part of the image more obvious, and two, to darken the rest of the image. So here's before, here's after. You can see already our eye is just slightly more drawn to this area of the image, which is great. Next, let's think about the sky. Easiest way for me is going to be just to draw a really rough mask. Switch over to oh, full flow. Reset all of these settings. Go down here to our range mask. Luminance, you guessed it. We're just going to grab the bright parts of the image. That should mask out the sky nicely. Somewhere around there. Press O again, and we can grab our exposure, bring that down, add some blue to the sky if you want, contrast up a little bit. All right, try highlights up, shadows way down, blacks way down. It always gets me, I'm taking the blacks down on the highlights, but whatever, it's a thing. Here's before, here's after. So again, we're evening out the light on this photo by taking the bright parts, making them slightly less bright, shadows making them slightly less dark. So in the same token, again, same kind of deal. We're going to grab just a little bit of exposure. Don't know why I selected a blank brush, but oh well. And same thing, this part of the image just kind of dark, so we're going to brighten that slightly. Again, luminance. Just target the darker areas of that image. And take our highlights up and our whites up. Good. All this without even adjusting any of these main basic sliders. So here's before, here's after. You can see what a transformation you can make little by little, just strategically adding contrast, brightness, exposure. We haven't done any sharpening or clarity or anything like that. Okay, one area of this background that is distracting to me, this is going to seem super weird, but this little speck of snow, I know it's normal and it should be in there, but I'm just not, my eye is kind of distracted by it. So I'm going to get rid of it. There's another one up here. I mean, I guess I could get rid of all these snow spots because I'm just super weird that way. Good. Before. Hello. Before. After. Okay. We're doing good. Now these mountains are looking a little dark, probably from the sky mask that I applied. And I really want to bring out the texture and the sharpness in them. So I'm just going to do a rough mask up in here. We should be able to use the auto mask feature and have it do a pretty good job this time because we've got a pretty decent line of contrast on these mountains. Yep, nice. So that'll save a lot of time. 
And I'm going to do two different things here. I'm going to raise the highlights, lower the shadows. You can see how much contrast we've added. Now this part of the mountain is already dark. I don't want to actually darken that anymore. So I'm going to erase my change there. Good. Back at it, let's raise the whites a little bit. Add a little bit of texture. And you can see this is an example of an image where we have pretty much everything in focus except the very foreground. And that's because if we go to our info here, this image was taken at ISO F4 and it was taken on a 16 mil. So pretty much everything is in focus. And see how much better of an image you wind up with? Sometimes depth of field actually works against you. So just be aware of that. Just because your lens can go to f1.2 or 1.4 doesn't mean you always need to use it at that place. In fact, your image will be more sharp. You'll get better results if you go a little bit higher anyways than what the lens has as a max. Okay, now here's the first sign that this image wasn't taken on a tripod. The fact that we've got this blur over here in the corner, and that's kind of unfortunate and annoying. There's not much I can do about that. Also, the color on this part of the image is very red, I guess because the sun was slightly hitting it. And in person, it was probably beautiful in camera because it's blurry and just doesn't blend with the rest of the image. We're gonna try and fix that. So we're gonna take some of the red out by pulling our magenta away and cooling it down. Then I'm going to go and try and darken it. Because dark things are less obvious in the image. Your eye's not drawn to the dark things as much as to the light things. Somewhere around there. So here's before, here's after. Have we made it go away? No. Is it still unfortunate and the only flaw I really can find in this image? Yes. Yes, it is. You could try cropping, but then I'd lose out on these cool canoes. All right. Last thing I want to do is kind of enhance the texture and kind of interest of the few things in this photo that I think are really cool, other than these boats, which is this little puddle here and this grass. So we're just going to raise our whites on there like that. Highlights. Maybe add a little texture. Of course, we don't want to go too far, then it just looks weird. So pull back the shadows. Here's before and here's after. So we've just enhanced that contrast a little bit. All that, and we've still left this pretty much bare bones natural. So you can see when you have it right in camera, wow, how amazing does it look without even having to do any editing, let alone what someone awesome other than myself could do. Okay, so we've added a bit of an S-curve, just increase the contrast in the image. I don't want to go too far and actually make our sky too bright, so we're just going to lower the midtones a little bit. Kind of mess around, see what happens. Actually, raising the midtones in this particular case feels better to me. Good. Use before tone curve, after tone curve. Just pops a little bit more. And last of all, because I love these boats and everything they represent, I'm just going to brush on them, switch to our add texture brush. That'll make them pop a little bit more, hopefully, theoretically. And of course, we could do this all day. We could enhance this tree line. Just bring out things that we love, try and minimize things that we don't love so much. Do the same thing on a couple of these areas of the mountains that are really quite stunning. So I don't have to actually mask on the entire mountain. In fact, the more selective you are about where you add sharpening and where you add contrast, the more effective it's going to be. So here's that mask. And here's what it's doing. Cool. So here's our before. Here's our after. Not a huge transformation, but that's because we're just pulling out the beautiful parts in the photo already. We're not trying to make it something it wasn't. Okay, so this photo, if you actually zoom way out to like 25%, it looks really good. And then you zoom in and you realize, oh no, it's very, ah, oh, it does look better now. That's weird. But it's pretty fuzzy. So if we look at the info on this lens, I don't know why it was fuzzy. It probably just wasn't purely in focus. Ah, I see. Whoever took this image focused right around here on this fence. So you wound up with a background that is really out of focus. Can you fix this image? Well, I mean, we could play around with it. It kind of feels tilt shift because it's out of focus. <laughs> Maybe we could work with that. So let's try. Uh, first off, I'm not going to worry about the fence. That would be a Photoshop job and it would be a big Photoshop job to try and get rid of that. So get it right in camera when and where you can. It's going to save you so much time and effort. We'll get rid of a few distracting things that just pop out to me right away. 
The colors are good. I like that. The contrast of the image is good, if only it were in focus. So we'll start by just adding some sharpening overall. Take our masking up. Radius up. Okay, here's before, here's after. Now the texture brush, or the texture tool in Lightroom, is actually magic sometimes for being able to recover images. So we'll try taking that up a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better. So here's before, here's after. So we've sharpened it quite a bit. Is it usable to print? Probably not, but on a smaller screen than mine right now, yeah, I think it would look good. Good enough for Instagram, something like that. I've got some weird, weird fringing going on in the top corner, so let's deal with that. Go over here to our, not detail panel, our lens corrections. Grab our eyedropper. Bam. 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 And with any luck, we should... be able to fix a lot of that. It's not going to get rid of it completely because, well, we've got a really strange out-of-focus image happening here. A beautiful image, but an out-of-focus one all the same. So let's try something creative. Let's do a tilt-shift kind of effect. So to do that, grab your graduated filter, make it nice and skinny like this. Okay, we're going to duplicate it, grab another one coming from the other side. So we've got one coming from here, one coming from here. Now what we're going to do is remember all of that texture we added, we're going to take it away. We're going to take the contrast down. We're going to darken it slightly. Maybe lower the dehaze a little bit. Take our sharpness significantly down. Okay, something like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this other side. Just by duplicating it. Rotate it. Take it back over here. So if you're wondering what a tilt shift lens is, it actually is a lens with this kind of adjustable mm, barrel. <laughs> and you can take this barrel, point the lens in a certain way, and it'll adjust the plane of focus so that it's instead of your focus just being in a straight line, it can be at a curved line. So you can actually have this building in focus, but also this back building in focus, and have the areas over here and here out of focus. So we're kind of trying to simulate that a little bit. Now, no one's saying this is going to fool anybody and everybody. But if we take it, we kind of massage it. I'm duplicating this effect now, but this time I'm making the graduated filter a little bit bigger. Dialing it back a little. We're just trying to blend it, make it look a little bit more like it was actually taken with a tilt shift lens. So here's before and here's after. Kind of adds an interesting effect. Lastly, we're going to do that same effect, but this time with a radial filter, contrast down, highlights down, invert it with the apostrophe key, so it's inside and not outside. That's actually backwards. <laughs> uh, take our texture down, clarity down, dehaze down, exposure down. And you kind of got to play around, see what works, see what's going too far, what's not. Is it totally convincing? Yeah, maybe, maybe not, but is it kind of an interesting effect? Yeah, I think it kind of is. Lastly, we'll just add a little selective sharpening to this building. Only so much you can do when the actual original photo is not quite perfect, but here's before, here's after. So we've kind of made it interesting. If not perfect, it's interesting. <laughs> Certainly on Instagram, on a smaller screen, I think it would translate better. Of course, you would want to go up and just kind of hide this tilt shift effect a little bit better by slightly raising the exposure on just the bright areas of the image. Just so it doesn't look like you darkened everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's before that and after that. So we've added a little bit of pop, a little contrast across the image, and here's our before, and here's our after. So there you go. That's a little technique you can try if you like it. If not, that's okay too. Okay, this one, not so much a landscape, and honestly, I could pick it apart, but let's just talk about how we could improve this composition. First off, 
most of photography when it comes to taking a good photo is finding something beautiful and taking everything else away that doesn't serve that photo. Okay, so we've got nice light on this car. It's a nice cloudy day, so we, we have some nice specular highlights happening on the trunk. We've got good reflections, but everything else in this photo is not serving this car. We've got two different textures of driveways. One driveway is kind of wet and dry underneath. We've got some spots here. We've got this grass. It's kind of just the overall background is sort of depressing. Now, if we had nothing but this car and these trees, let's just crop in here. Let's just pretend that the photo were taken like this, okay? Now, it doesn't feel good because we haven't captured the whole car, but the actual overall aesthetic is going to feel a lot better just because there's far less um, distractions. Now, there's also a house in the background here. The trees are just meh. So another thing you could have done is grabbed a lens. Instead of a 30 mil, you could have used, say, a 70 mil at the same f-stop, and that would have given you a much more creamy background. Or you can do one of these, take our dehaze down. I don't know, we're just sort of messing around, seeing what we can do. Basically, we want to place the focus on the car, right? So here's before, and you can see what a big difference it makes just to remove those distractions. So take the car, drive it up the street, even on this driveway up here would have been a much better composition. The exposure is great. I like the framing of the car overall. Um, could add some interest, add some motion to the shot. I personally think that driving shots are really awesome. Um, there are different things that you could do, like take this a little bit later at night and have your headlights on. That's going to add a lot better of an effect. One of the things when it comes to editing car photos that is really effective is you just add a little bit of a glow. So you raise the exposure. Hello. Lower the contrast. Kind of like we've got a headlight on here. So you can see we just drag that around. Now this effect doesn't really work in this particular image because, well, it makes no sense. It's during the daytime, you're not going to see the lights, but at night, you get that advantage. So just take a couple extra hours, move this car somewhere else, you're going to get a much better image. Okay, moving on, we've got another one, nice hiker here. This is beautiful, you can see the lighting was nice and even across the entire frame, so it's really as simple as grabbing our exposure, taking it up, the photo looks great. What can we do to enhance it? Well, I think our hiker here is a little bit dark, so we're just going to lower the contrast, raise the highlights and the whites, and invert that mask. We kind of have a mobile spotlight that I personally find really nice and transparent. Here's before, here's after. Remember your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of the image, so if we want our hiker to be the star of this photo, which I believe he or she is, well then brightening them up is going to make a difference. Okay, I love these clouds. I think they're the best thing ever. In fact, one thing that might have been kind of cool to play with since this photo was taken at f9, it might have been interesting just to try another alternative with it at, say, f1.8, with the clouds in focus and our hiker intentionally out of focus. That might have been kind of interesting, but I love this photo. I think it's great. I'm not even going to mess with it anymore because I think it's awesome as is. Maybe warm it up. There. Okay, this photo, an example of a car photo with a really engaging background, a background that serves the composition rather than takes away from it. What a huge difference there is between that and this. Now, of course, we've got different cars, different weather, different everything, but hopefully you can see how this serves the photo. This adds to the composition. So let's see what we can do to add even more. First off, our car, a little bit dark, so we're just going to invert the mask I have here. Again, we're raising the exposure, raising the highlights and the whites a little bit. And we can lower the contrast. That'll brighten things up too. Okay, before, after, right? This is looking a little bit too obvious, a little bit too brushed, so I'm going to extend that radial filter out a little bit. Next, if you wanted to, we could take some of the saturation out of the greens and make it kind of a more moody vibe. So let's just play around here. Let's see what we got. And the car, we can maybe add some saturation and lose the saturation in the greens. That'll make it stand out a little bit more. It's up to you. If you like that, cool. If you don't, do your own thing. And the yellows, we could either desaturate them or we could try adjusting the hue, make them warmer. Before, after. So you might like that, you might like it as is. It's really up to you to decide what you love about this photo and what you want to bring out. So again, edit this photo for yourself, post it to at Signature Edits Co. And let me see what you come up with. And I'm just going to enhance the details on these tires. Grab my texture brush. Raise the exposure and the whites. Texture. OK. 
Okay, and while we're at it, we're just gonna enhance the parts of the truck I really wanna bring out. So this Toyota logo and the lights. Now here's an example where we could actually use that light trick. So we're gonna grab radio filter, something like that. So remember, most of the light is coming forward, so we just wanna have our radio filter slightly forward. Hello. Reset this. Oh crap, did I just reset the whole thing? No, I just need to invert my mask. And if this ever loads properly, we can grab our white balance, take that up, take our exposure up, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down. Okay, still not convincing. Don't worry about it, we're getting there, we're getting there. We just wanna get the shape right, kind of the size right. Now we'll lower our exposure. This is a lot easier in Photoshop, by the way. <laughs> okay, now let's get rid of some of that color that's a little bit too much. And I wanna create a secondary glow after I finish this first one. So we've got our first one like that. Duplicate it. Make it smaller and put it right where the actual light is. And sometimes your effect does not work at all. So you say, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it so much. We can brighten it up. Keep playing, keep messing around. Eventually you get something you're more happy with. Okay, so for context, here's before, here's after. So this guy, we could probably roll back on a few of these adjustments. Okay. Once again, here's before, and here's after. So we've kind of brightened it up. That's looking a little bit too obvious, a little bit too much, so we can definitely dial things back. But it just adds a little bit more pop where you'd expect it to be on the actual running lights. And that's one thing that they definitely could have improved in this particular composition, is turn the lights on in this truck when taking this photo. That way you wouldn't have to add it afterwards, it would just naturally be there and life would be awesome. But life already is awesome, so don't stress too much, awesome photographer. Here's before, here's after. So you can see when you've got an amazing photo, amazing composition, awesome lighting, everything is good, no distractions, it doesn't take much to get an awesome result, right? I'd be happy posting this almost just by itself, so. Okay, we've got one last photo of the San Francisco Bridge. And start by adjusting our crop here. Removing distractions would be removing people. Now this is gonna be next to impossible in Lightroom, but we're gonna give it a go. Lightroom can be kind of smart sometimes. And if you're posting on Instagram, you could probably actually get away with this, honestly, because it's just gonna be on a tiny little phone that people are seeing it. However, if you're posting somewhere else, not going to be able to get rid of these two, probably. We'll try. If you're posting somewhere else where it's going to be viewed on a larger screen, well, then you're going to have to be a little more careful. Can he do it? Actually, not bad. Oh, we've got one last one last friend sitting out here. Let's zoom back in. Hooray! Let's see if I can get... Sure. Okay, so here's before and here's after. Now, I'd have to go back in and kind of correct some of these so they're a little bit more natural, but you can see, pretty big difference, just getting rid of those distractions. Okay, now we're edit, ready to edit the image a little bit more. Oh, somebody else. That's the thing about the San Francisco Bridge, you can count on there being people there literally all day long, every single day. Okay, good, we got rid of the distractions. Things are feeling much better. Now we can go ahead and make some overall adjustments. Again, the lighting was actually taken at a really nice time of day. We've got pretty even light overall. 
Go to our tone curve here, add a basic S curve. Why is it called an S curve? Because it kind of resembles an S, but it really doesn't, personal opinion. We should call it something else, like the, the standard Instagrammer curve. That's what we should call it. Okay, looking okay. I'm going to adjust the hue of the blues because I don't really like them the way they are. I want them to be more of a, let's say, navy rather than an aqua. Then I'm actually probably going to take the saturation of the blues down a bit because everything I want to bring the saturation up overall. So we'll just see what we can come up with here. Raise my whites a little bit. Lower my shadows. Warm up the white balance. And we're looking a little magenta, so take that towards green. Okay, now, could we do a million different things with this image? Yes, we could. Could we do all sorts of stylistic changes? Yes, we could. Is this a nice way to edit a landscape without going overboard? Yeah, I think it's okay. We could probably dial back a little bit. I've gone a little too far. Just depends what your taste is, right? So that's my basic edit of this image in you know two minutes. But if you have different ideas, please, again, edit it. Share it on Instagram and tag at Signature Edits Co. I'd love to see what you come up with. I'm sure it'll be way better than me. Of course, you can mess around for days and days. We could try and even out and get rid of some of these highlights on the waves. Things like that are just going to make the image feel a little bit better. Just evening out the lighting by taking those parts of the image that are slightly out of control, tone them down, take the other parts of the image you want to bring out, like this bridge. We really didn't spend enough time on that. I might be able to mask it with the luminance mask. So let's go to luminance, press O. Probably it'll be in the shadows and the midtones. I'm hoping. Good. And we can add some texture to this bridge, hopefully. Some contrast, make it brighter. A little saturation. So as you can see, you can keep going for days and days and days until you come up with something you're really happy with. But I think at this point, you're kind of seeing my trend throughout the images. It's about finding the things that are distracting and slowly getting rid of them, taking them away, doing whatever you can to minimize them. And of course, getting it right in camera, starting with great light, great composition. Um, that's going to be way better than actually trying to fix an image that already has issues in it to start with, right? So the easiest images to edit are the images that were taken well in camera. So the first thing to practice with your landscape photography is just going out, taking awesome images. The next thing to practice, getting rid of the distractions, slowly enhancing the things you want to bring out. And overall, over time, you'll get better and better and better. I know I'm still learning every single day. So if this was helpful, do me a big favor. Can you hit that thumbs up button? If not, you just leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do better next time. And if you want to grab some free presets, I'll leave a link in the description below. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Go create something awesome.